Arkansas primary was going on. But we're on the Texas side because there's a little election coming up on Tuesday. And we need everybody in Texas to do two things. First of all, we need to make sure they go out and vote for me. And secondly, we need to make sure that they get their friends and relatives and associates from work, neighbors. We need to get them out there voting for me. Amen. And as we've said, if they're not going to go vote for me, then we need to make sure they stay home next Tuesday. I want to say thanks for all of you coming out in the middle of the day. And we're delighted to be here. I wish Janet could be with me. She is in Ohio campaigning one last time there. And we were in Ohio all day on uh, uh, Tuesday and part of Monday night. And then she stayed up there yesterday and today. And then she'll join us in Lubbock, Texas late tonight. And then we'll spend the rest of the time in uh, Texas between now and next uh, Tuesday. So we've got a lot of ground to cover. In fact, uh, Texas is a pretty big state, as everybody knows. And we're going to be literally from Laredo to Lubbock to Amarillo to Waco, Dallas and Fort Worth, Houston and San Antonio, and I'm not sure where else. Uh, but we couldn't think of a better place to start the Texas final lap than in Texas County. <laughs> When David was talking about uh, what makes this election so very important, I know the national press has been saying, well, you know, mathematically, this election has already been settled. Well, I, I've been asking the, the national press to, to help me with something here, because when they tell me that the numbers are already there, I ask them, if the numbers are so precise, how come not two of any of the networks or two of any of the newspapers have the same numbers when it comes to delegate counting? <laughs> So the fact is, nobody yet has captured this. And here's the fact. Texas is a critical state. We win Texas, things change. And if we win Texas, it could be that nobody has 1,191 secured delegates. This could go to the convention. You know, in the past, there have been some times when things did go to the convention. Some say, oh, that would be a terrible thing. Well, I don't know, that's when uh, Dwight David Eisenhower was uh, elected on the second ballot at a convention. By the way, Abraham Lincoln was elected at a convention on the seventh ballot. That turned out pretty decent for the Republicans. So the fact is, going to the convention isn't the worst thing. The worst thing is not having the right person nominated for president and losing in November, and that's what we don't want to do, my friend. There's some reasons that this election is going to be more than uh, some people want to understand because David mentioned the difference in experience. Being the only person in the race who's actually run a government and did so for ten and a half years as a government, it matters that you've had chief executive experience because that's what the job is. But it also matters that you understand the mindset, which is different legislatively than it is to be the chief executive. Legislators are process focused. Chief executives have to think about the product, what the final result is. But more than that, it's also about fundamental issues that really are decisive for this country. Amen. I'm the only person left in this race who believes that life is important enough that we should protect it with the Human Life Amendment to the Constitution. Amen. I didn't just get those views from some political journal. Those are views that I believe are steeped in the very Declaration of Independence itself. Amen. When the Founding Fathers said that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The idea that we're equal, that no person is more equal than another person, is fundamental to who we are as a country. It even translates into the doctrine of our military, where we have as our byword that you leave no man behind in the battlefield. Even when that soldier is wounded and no longer has the capacity to continue fighting, when he's lost his function as a soldier, we don't say, well, he's no longer of value to us because his capacity to fight has been diminished. He still has value because of who he is, not what he does. Amen. And that's why we go back and get it. And I'm glad we're a part of a nation that values and honors every single human life and would value the life of our soldiers for who they are, not just for what job they perform. That's why when a 12-year-old boy 
who's a Boy Scout, gets lost in the woods of North Carolina, we don't just say, hey, I hope his parents can find him. We launch a search party and we go looking for him. Thanks, guys. We gotta get going. Dress you. Uh, yeah. 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 Y